it's trying to sell off its financial assets to some third party entity which actually is called as a special purpose vehicle this a special purpose vehicle is purchasing the various financial assets of a company and using this as the base it is creating and issuing different securities to the market so it is creating a uh, bonds based on the cash flows that are coming out of this financial asset and issuing the bonds in the market so in a way what is happening is the bonds that are issued by the spv they are fetching the cash for the spv from various investors who in turn is paying that cash to this entity and purchasing the financial assets of this entity this is the overall process that is uh, going in case of securitization so any financial assets so generally probably if i am talking about this as a bank which has issued so many loans to the customers it could be vehicle loans it could be mortgage based loans or it could be student loans it could be any other loans so this bank might have given different loans to different participants so which means all the loans will actually become the assets of this particular bank in some cases even uh, it might have given credit cards it might uh, so the credit card receivables also could be another asset of the bank now there could be an spv another legal entity which would be purchasing all these financial assets of this bank and uh, using that fund it issues securities so uh, it, it is using the fund that is uh, got from the securities from the market using it to purchase the financial asset so using that asset as the backup where the purchased assets which is the pool of loans generally so that is used as a backup for making the payments to the bond investors so why is this concept come into picture now if i look at from a bank's perspective it uh, has given lot of loans and these loans would be paid at different points in time the principal and the interest repayments may happen at different points in time until that point in time the bank's assets are completely illiquid right because uh, generally in all these cases the bank would have kept the vehicle as a collateral in case of vehicle loans it must have kept the building as a collateral in case of uh, mortgage back loans all these are illiquid assets and um, uh, until the until the borrowers uh, keep paying in some cases there could be a 5 year payment period it can go to 20 years or it could be even a 30 year payment period so the borrowers keep uh, paying the interest and the principal at regular periods of time until that particular point in time the the assets are illiquid and probably the bank has to wait until it receives the cash flows whereas uh, now when it has sold there is again a ready cash that has come into the bank which means it can actually give more and more new loans that's one motive behind this entire securitization and on the second case the cost let's say for this bank if it wants new capital if it wants new capital and it wants to raise capital from the market it would be pretty expensive because it's a fresh debt kind of thing that has been raised whereas in this mechanism it's like selling the existing assets to the third party which means it's a kind of collateralized kind of a borrowing that it is doing these financial assets are acting as a collateral for raising money 
So because the collateral is very strong, the cost of raising funds become lesser and lesser. So that's one of the prime reasons. So in a net, I could see the major motivation for uh, securitization is the conversion of illiquid assets to liquid. And uh, the second thing uh, being uh, the cost of funding, it can quite comfortably be reduced. So, so with this as a, a base, the securitization industry has flourished quite heavily in the last one decade. So, any, uh, any kind of loans can be securitized. Most commonly, I see the mortgages being securitized and uh, whenever these mortgages are securitized and uh, any SPV that has purchased these mortgages and issued the bonds or any other securities based on them, we call them as mortgage-backed securities, MBS, mortgage-backed securities. And if the same stuff has been performed with respect to any other assets apart from mortgages, the same logic, SPV has purchased those assets and uh, using that as the base, if the bonds have been issued, we call them as ABS, asset-backed securities. Now, because of these, what is happening in a general banking system, right? Let's try to understand the general banking system, the depositors, regular customers, they are depositing their money into the bank, different kinds of deposits for which they get different kinds of interest rates. Sometimes it could be a majorly it's a fixed or a little bit of floating. In turn, the banks are using this fund, whatever got through various deposits or sometimes through some borrowings. The fund that has come into the bank, it is getting used to issue the loans, different kinds of loans. It could be an automobile based loans, it could be mortgage based loans, or it could be student loans, it could be agricultural loans. I can think of many kinds of loan which the bank is issuing. Now, these people's money who have deposited is being used by the bank to lend. So, these people, they are getting almost a fixed rate of return and are not getting a direct exposure to the bank's loans. Right? They are not getting, they are not becoming a direct lenders. The bank is taking the risk in this process in terms of lending. But uh, from the depositor's perspective, there is a lot of safety. They are, they are not getting a direct exposure to this, which means they are not taking any risk, so they can't get a higher return because they are not taking any kind of a risk. Now, this securitization is actually bridging the relationship between the lenders and the borrowers directly. Right? And because of this, the risk instead of the bank taking the risk here it is transferring the risk from the uh, it is transferring the risk directly to the lenders itself so the lender it is acting as an intermediary in the process between the borrowers and the lenders and because of this for the lenders the cost of lending they are going to get a much better return because they are going to take a slightly higher risk in the process and from the borrower's perspective, the cost is going to be much lesser because uh, one, one layer is completely removed off. So, intermediation costs, because now the bank is no more taking the risk. The, it's only doing the facilitation kind of a role. And because of this facilitation role, uh, the intermediation uh, costs or the, the intermediary costs are typically uh, going down which is resulting in overall lenders getting a slightly higher rate of return and borrowers uh, getting it for a slightly lesser cost. And uh, even if you look at it from the other perspective, whatever the loans that are being sold to the SPV, 
and that is what is being invested by the different uh, investors through purchasing the bonds they have a direct access on these loans in case the in case uh, the company is not doing well in case the bank credit banks ratings have gone down or bank is going into a default or any other stuff these people instead of having a general claim on all the assets of the firm they have specific claim they have specific claim on all these loans uh, the financial assets which have been securitized so that's a a much better seniority that is coming as a part of their settlement process and these bonds they are actively traded in the secondary market that's one more benefit that can come the liquidity is getting increased quite drastically and uh, because the bank is receiving the proceeds much before the payment of the interest and the principal the bank is getting more money so that uh, it can lend more the volume and the growth uh, of the business is much much higher for the bank in this particular case and uh, these bonds they can be structured probably uh, the spv could structure the bonds depending of, of different maturities of different coupon payments of different uh, Uh, of different uh, priority in terms of the payment it could very well be structured to suit the needs investment needs of different kinds of investors so which means a better matching is coming a better availability of uh, the sources of funding is coming all these things rather than just looking at uh, rather than just looking at a fixed deposit or any other regular uh, saving deposits with the bank new avenues are coming up which are creating the required amount of exposure to the uh, loan portfolios of the bank so on one side it can even act as a diversification because you can very well plan out how much risk you want to take and based on the additional risk which you are willing to take you can structure the you can structure uh, the type of bonds accordingly because uh, this structure will provide bonds of different maturities different uh, coupon structures and different priorities in terms of payment so rather than directly purchasing the loans going through an spv route and purchasing the bonds that are issued by the spv will definitely uh, create uh, a much diversification and a risk reduction for the investor so just to quickly uh, understand the various uh, processes as a part of the summarization i will take a case of a bank which has issued the loans right probably it has given different kinds of loans to different borrowers so all those loans become the assets of the bank right now this bank has sold all these assets to an spv now this spv might have been created by the bank itself the assets are removed from the balance sheet from the balance sheet this assets are removed and are transferred to this spv now for the spv that assets whatever it had it uses those assets as a base and it actually issues the bonds in the capital market right and so in this case the bank is called as the originator whereas the spv in this case is actually uh, the issuer of uh, the asset backed securities or sometimes we call it as the trust they are doing this process and this spv as a word itself is special purpose vehicle so this is created exclusively for purchasing the loans from the bank and issuing bonds out of that assets 
So it's purely its purpose is only for that much. And it has created the bonds which are called as asset backed securities and sell, sold them to the investors. And depending on the, the payments that the borrowers are making to the bank, bank here will act as a servicer. There could be a third party also which acts as a servicer. Servicer is a party who takes care of take collecting the payments, uh, interacting with the borrowers, uh, mentioning about uh, the due dates, etc. They are responsible for the collection of the EMIs or the interest and the principal payments on the loan. So this comes in. And uh, the principal and the interest and if at all the servicer is a third party, some portion uh, goes as uh, the payment towards the servicing party. And this amount, whatever comes, the interest and the principal, they go towards the payment for these bonds. Right? They go towards the payment. Now, this is where instead of issuing all bonds of one type, there could be multiple types of bonds that could be issued.